Our next interviewee will be Professor John Cryan, Senior Investigator at APC Microbiome Ireland, and he will speak on the topic of stress and the gut, stress on microbes, and the possible differences between men and women in relation to that topic. So stress is how our body is reacting to some form of threat or noxious stimulus. And over the last number of years, it's becoming quite increasingly uh, known that the gut microbes are playing a role in regulating how the body is responding to such stressors. A lot of what we're working on is, uh, when we talk about stress, is really uh, about um, either chronic stress or traumatic stress. Um, now, we also shouldn't be uh, uh, forget about acute stress. We all go through acute stresses in our everyday lives. And even there's accumulating data that the microbes in our gut might be affecting that. But our research here in Cork is really focused on uh, the ability of the body to respond to chronic stress. And what we've shown over uh, a number of years now is that the microbes change in response to chronic stress and that the, uh, the composition and also the metabolites that, that are generated from these, these uh, microbes are also altering. And the question that we're trying to get at is, is that related to how the body responds to the stressors, how we deal with stressors, and how we can actually perhaps treat stress-related disorders. What we're beginning to also understand is trying to decouple the relationship between st the, the effects of stress on all the systems in the, in, in, in the body, so directly on the nervous system, on the immune system, uh, and on the endocrine system from its direct effects on the microbes themselves. And in a whole field, what we call microbial endocrinology, we're beginning to understand that there is a direct effect of stress on the actual micro micro microbial composition itself and that can feed back on all of these systems and even feed back on the brain. For now, most of the data we have is, is still confined to uh, animal models. So a lot of the work has been done in mice and rats. And so what we need to do now is move more towards humans and understand what are the real long-term consequences of this. One intriguing uh, um, uh, study that we've been looking at is like looking at chronic uh, exam stress in our students and looking at the changes in the microbes there. But our, but our microbes are still quite plastic and they, they, they can also return to normal after the stressor ends. And so there's a need for more studies in this field, especially in humans, but it's intriguing to think that how we deal with chronic stress could be down to the composition of the microbes in the gut. Another area that's gaining a lot of attention is looking at stress coping and also looking at um, uh, susceptibility versus resilience. Hans Selye, who is the father of stress research and coined the term stress, said that it's not stress that kills us, it's our reaction to it. And what if it is the, when we're, the, the, what are the factors that are underpinning that? We understand that genetics is really important, the environment we live in is very important, but the question that we've been also asking is, what if it's to do with the microbes in the gut? And again, in animal studies, we've shown that the composition of the gut microbes uh, really uh, w w was able to distinguish the animals that were going to be susceptible and cope uh, badly with stressors versus those that cope well. But we need more data to really understand what is it in these microbes that is underpinning uh, stress coping. One could conceptualize uh, illness in its, in, uh, as a type of stressor. And understanding how the body responds to illness uh, as a stressor is, is also been very importantly driven through a microbial lens. And you know we're beginning to understand this in terms of uh, various aspects of illness like fatigue uh, in particular.
Sex differences are everywhere in our overall physiology, and it's perhaps not surprising that there is a, a, a sex differences in relation to uh, stress. Um, many of what we call stress-related disorders seem to be much more apparent uh, in, in uh, women over men. Often anxiety and depression, for example, are about twice as evident in, 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 um, um, in women as men. Irritable bowel syndrome, which is another stress-related disorder, is also more prevalent uh, in females. Um, w the, are there sex differences then in the, in the microbiome? Well, this is gaining a lot of attention right now. Originally, there was thought to be minimal uh, uh, stress differences in, in, in human studies, but now as the, the, the samples get bigger and we b begin to understand and dig deeper into the complexity of the microbes, there are clear sex differences. And this, isn't, this shouldn't be surprising. What this means for disease and what this means for stress needs to be decoupled more, but it, it, we need to really look at this in all studies, and uh, this is something we, we're strongly advocating. We've shown, for example, that the relationship between the microbes and the brain in early life, there are clear sex differences. Male uh, animals are much more susceptible to signals, uh, disturbance of signals from the microbes. One of the things we've been trying to look at, if we really un understand that the microbes are gating how we respond to stress, then we should be able to target the microbiome to, to help people deal with stress better. And so over the years, we've been doing a number of studies, largely in healthy volunteer populations uh, overall. And there are certain specific bacteria that we've shown that has an ability to dampen down stress responses uh, in humans. Uh, most don't do anything, but there are certain strains, in particular certain bifidobacteria, strains that have been shown to do that um, and also in human brain imaging studies have been shown to dampen down uh, the responses to stress. More recently we, we took the um, uh, um, we decided to look at whether if we believe that microbes are driving stress responses, we should be through diet, because diet is one of the biggest factors underpinning uh, changes in the microbiome. If we changed our microbiome, could we uh, temper the effects of stress in everyday lives? And so we took uh, a population of people who are um, have relatively poor diets and are stress sensitive, so largely our student population, and we looked at changing their diet by ramping up fiber and ramping up fermented foods, which are really good for our, micro, our, our microbiome. And in doing so, we showed that they clearly had a reduction in their stress response after just one month. And the individuals that stuck to the diet better had the bigger response in, in dampening their stress response. So this is opening up a whole new concept of through nutrition, we can actually target the microbes in our gut to dampen down the stress response. How it's happening, we still have to figure out all of the mechanisms and, the, and understanding which components of the microbiome, how long will it persist, and would it also work in people that have uh, stress-related disorders.